got a nice integral type equation to show you guys today, and you'll see that it actually ends in a differential equation. Okay, so let's see what we've got. We want to find all functions f of x such that the integral from zero to x of f of t dt is equal to x times f of x squared, where we're squaring that function. Okay, so maybe a big hint built into this is that we've got this integral defined on the left-hand side to a variable endpoint. And since we've got it defined to a variable endpoint, we probably want to use the fundamental theorem of calculus part two. And so let's do that. That means we want to take the derivative of this left-hand side and the right-hand side. So the derivative of the left-hand side will just give us f of x, just again by that fundamental theorem of calculus. And then the derivative of the right-hand side we have to be a bit careful with because we have to use the product rule and the chain rule. So we'll get x times the derivative of f of x squared. So that's gonna be two times f of x times f prime of x because it's like we're composing f of x inside of the square function. And so we get like two times f of x times the derivative, again, by the chain rule. And then after that, we just have f of x quantity squared. Now let's see what we've got. We've got a factor of x on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side that we could maybe cancel. But we can only do that if f is not identically zero or in some sort of interval where f is not equal to zero. But we're not gonna worry about that so much. We're just gonna play it fast and loose and see what we get at the end. So let's take this entire equation and divide by f of x and see what we get. So that's gonna give us one on the left-hand side and then cleaning this up a little bit, we'll have 2x times f prime of x. And then here we'll have plus f of x. And now we've got something called a first order linear differential equation. And in order to make it look like one that you might see in a textbook, let's maybe go ahead and set y equal to f of x and then also divide by 2x. And we'll see why we want to do that once we get around to it. Okay, so here we'll have um, 1 over 2x equals y prime, because remember we just divided by the 2x, plus 1 over 2x times y. But now if we were to rewrite that a little bit, like change the order around, we would see that this is equal to y prime plus 1 over 2x times y equals 1 over 2x. But that is of the form y prime plus a of x times y equals b of x, which like I said is a standard first order linear differential equation. And if you recall from the standard method for solving these things, we want to create something called an integrating factor, and that will allow us to arrive at a solution fairly easily. And in this kind of setup, the integral factor, which I like to call alpha, is equal to the exponential of the antiderivative of a of x. So let's see what that is for us. So let's maybe set alpha equal to the exponential, I'll write it as exp, and then the antiderivative of a of x, but for us, a of x is being played by one over two x. So we've got one over two x dx. But this is gonna be the exponential of one half times the natural log of x. But let's see what we can do there. We can take this half and bring it inside the natural log using natural log rules. But now the exponential function and the logarithm function are inverses of each other. So that gives us x to the half or the square root of x. Okay. So now let's also recall a fact from the solution strategy for first order linear differential equations, and that is the solution should be given by the following quantity. So it's y equals one over alpha of x times the integral of alpha of x times b of x dx plus some constant. That's a constant from solving the differential equation. And I've got a video where I derive this solution for a first order linear differential equation if you guys wanna check that out. Okay, so let's maybe 
Bring this kind of information to the top and we'll finish it off. Out that our original function obeyed some sort of first order linear differential equation. And then after setting y equal to our goal function, we saw that that first order linear differential equation was given by y prime plus one over two x times y equals one over two x. Next, we calculated the integrating factor to be the square root of x, and then we recalled this standard like solution strategy for a first order linear differential equation with this formula. Now we're ready to just pl plug in the details. So here we've got this is one over the square root of x, because we've got one over alpha, and then we have the integral of alpha of x times b, but notice b is one over x, or one over two x, so that's gonna be one half, and then the square root of x is in the denominator as well. Let's maybe talk our way through that. So why do we get a square root of x in the denominator? Well, because we've got alpha times b, so we've got the square root of x over x, but that simplifies down to this. Okay, then we have dx plus our constant. Okay, but now looking at this, this is equal to one half x to the minus one half, and so that's just really set up for using the power rule for an antiderivative. The antiderivative of that would be the square root of x. So let's see, we've got one over the square root of x. Taking the antiderivative, we'll have the square root of x plus some constant. But then, multiplying this through, we, see get, we get one plus some constant over the square root of x. And so that is indeed the form of all functions that satisfy our original integral equation. So my question for you, which is maybe homework, is are all C and real numbers possible? So maybe, maybe not. Notice if we set C equals zero, that's possible because we get the integral from zero to one of one, which is just X equals x times one squared. That clearly works. But do all other values of c work? Well, I'll let you guys check that for yourselves. And that's a good place to stop.